Good morning, Oak City. Will you please stand? And we're going to open our praise and worship service this morning with prayer. And as you stand, just meditate on the goodness of the Lord. Meditate on all the things he's brought you through this past week. And that he's going to carry you through in the days to come. With our hearts and minds clear, to Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine. We thank you how you rose us up this morning to be clothed in our right mind and to be able to call your name Jesus, to say thank you for another night's sleep and a rising of a new, brand new Sunday morning. Lord, we ask that you bless the ones who are here. You know their needs, their wants, and their desires, Lord. We know that you will guide them through everything that will need to come to have your will and in in your glory, Lord Jesus. Bless the ones who are not here for whatever reasons, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep them nurtured. Keep them under your wings of protection and bring them back safe to us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that the songs that we're getting ready to sing now in praise and worship, let us worship ourselves so that we'll be open-minded and open heart to receive the word from the Lord from our pastor today, Lord Jesus. We ask that you keep us, guide us, and comfort us through all things. In your precious name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Good morning, Oak City. Good morning. Let's celebrate together by giving the Lord all the glory, honor, and praise for walking us through this week, being with us through this week, and creating yet another day, giving us an opportunity to see his beautiful work. Join with us as we give the Lord glory, honor, and praise. Come on, choir. Lord, we give you glory. Thank you. 
aroma of praise that we're sending up to him today. That he will be pleased with us. Sweet aroma of praise. Let it fill the air. Think about how good the Lord has been to us this week. Some of us have, have had ups, some of us have had downs, but he walked through it with us. Come on, choir, let the words. Let the words of my mouth and the songs of my heart reach you, oh Lord. Reach you, oh Lord. A sweet aroma.
May we all stand for our call to worship. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Let us prepare to sing our entriot with our voices of Oak City. Great is the Lord. God, we come this morning, Lord, acknowledging that you are great. Lord God, we love you this morning. We praise you this morning. We honor you this morning. Lord God, we give you all that we have this morning, and we pray that it will be found pleasing in our sight. Lord God, we acknowledge that we haven't done everything that you have required, but Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord God, help us to follow you more closely than we did last week. Lord, help us to seek you for those difficult decisions that we need to make. Lord God, we recognize you as being in control. Now, Father God, we ask that you would come and dwell among us. Lord, that this service would be what you would want it to be, that we would be hid behind the cross of Christ and only you would be the focus this morning. Lord God, we love you, we praise you, and we acknowledge that you are in control of all things. Lord God, we give this service to you, we praise you, we love you, and we honor you. In the precious name of your Son and our Savior, we count all things done. In the precious name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. continue to stand and worship as we are led in our responsive reading this morning by our trust sister 
our usher, Sister Deborah Birch. Responsive reading 572. Good morning. Responsive readings 572, Growing in Grace, coming from 2 Peter, first chapter, verses 2 through 11, and the third chapter, 17 and 18. I will read the leader, and you will read the congregation. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. To knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, be aware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness being led away with the error of the wicked. But to prove the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Let us continue in our worship and join the voices of Oak City in the singing of our morning hymn, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings. Now have our youth message by Sister Lashonda Pettis 
and Master Levi Pettis. We will follow the program as outlined from his fourth. Good morning. Would all the youth please stand and say the theme song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you, youth. Today is Ursher's Appreciation Day, and on behalf of all the Urshers in the Ursher's ministry and the leadership of Deaconess Shakita Douglas, happy Ursher's Day. Your willingness, heart, your attitude of gratitude and smiles to guide God's people in the right direction is truly a blessing. A doorkeeper on any given Sunday for the Lord God Almighty is truly a blessing. Today's topic is the main event. What is an usher? An unpaid occupation at church. <laughs> yes, it is true. A position out of love for Jesus Christ, for free and not for fee. An adult or a child that helps direct the order of service to get you to the main event is truly a blessing. Urshers are faith-based. They practice hospitality. Their work is for the kingdom and the king. The Urshers' two main goals are to get you seated and prepare you for the main event, which is worship service. Whether you arrive early or came in late, the main event will still happen. Please give the Urshers an opportunity to get you seated for the main event. There are times during worship service that you cannot walk, talk, or eat. There are times during service where you cannot send a text message, chew your gum, or balance your checkbook. <laughs> the order of service is an invitation for God to come into this place. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Remember, we are all standing on holy ground. We are the body of Jesus Christ and he is the head of our lives. The ushers have to maintain order and peace at all times. Second Kings chapter 22 speaks about doorkeepers, the sons of doorkeepers. First Chronicles 9, 17 through 27, speak of gatekeepers, their assignments every morning and working with the Levites. At all times, ushers should maintain a spirit of God, a mindset, of God in all situations. Colossians 3 and 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on things that are on earth. Sunday after Sunday, funeral after funeral, church event after church event, urchers put their feelings aside to do the work of the Lord. The need of the people is much greater than their own. The love of God can save people, save people, save people. Found people, find people. Acts 20 and 28, pay careful attention to yourselves, to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to care for the church of God, which is attained through his own blood. We are all called to serve, to be disciples in Jesus Christ. Usher your life, your conversation after Jesus Christ, the doorkeeper to your life. Amen. Good morning. Before I begin the announcements for today, I would like to recognize all the visitors. If you're a visitor, please stand and wait for an usher to hand you a microphone. Once you have one, give us your name and church affiliation if you have one, and also tell us who brought you to church today. Good morning. My name is Ola Bennett, and this is my mother, Leona Dunn. And we bring you greetings from Christian Faith Baptist Church, where Reverend Dr. David C. Forbes was our former pastor, and Reverend Cooper uh, is our pastor now. But your pastor and my retired pastor uh, are buddies, and, and they uh, 
serve together. And we had not been to the new uh, sanctuary, so we decided we would come today and visit. Thank you so much for having us. Hello, yes, my name is Dan Hamilton. I'm from Cabrera, or the uh, Rush Metropolitan AME Zion Church on Cabrera Street, the African American African American Methodist Episcopal Church on Cabrera Street. I've been going there eight years. I love the African American people. I believe that we're a strong country. We'll continue to be a strong country, and that we will pull together rather than fall apart. Thank you. My name is Watusha, and I'm here with Virginia. I don't have a third term. Oh, and this is Rayshawn and Elijah. John from Springfield Baptist Church. Good morning to um, Oak City Baptist Church and um, Pastor Newkirk. Um, my name is Genevia Pope Kimball. This is my family's home church. I'm from Augusta, Georgia, Tabernacle Baptist Church with the pastor, uh, Charles E. Goodman, senior pastor. And I'm here visiting my aunt and my cousins as well. Thank you. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. William T. Newkirk, and the Oak City family, we welcome you and invite you to come back soon. Oak City, please give our visitors a round of applause. <laughs> These are the announcements for Sunday, August 26, 2018. I will not read all of them, so please govern yourselves accordingly. Please join us for prayer meeting and Bible study Wednesday, August 29th at 6.30 p.m. The devotional leaders are the Sunday School Ministry, and the Bible study lesson will begin at Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. The administrative office will be closed on September 3rd, 2018. Church conference will be held on Friday, September 7th at 6.30, at 6 p.m. Meetings and choir rehearsals to be held the week of August 27th through September 1st, 2018. On August 28th and the 30th, musicians rehearsal at 6 p.m. and choir rehearsal at 7 p.m. Meetings to be held today following morning worship service. All, all persons with March birthdays will meet in the choir room all persons with August birthdays will meet in the library, and all persons with July birthdays will meet in the front of the sanctuary. Additional announcements. The Missionary Ministry Anniversary is Sunday, September 9th, 2018 at 11 a.m. The OCBC birthday celebration will be held on Friday, September 14th, 2018 at 6 p.m. We are looking for volunteers to lead the effort for each month. Please sign up in the administrative office or see a member of the Sunday school staff for additional details. The men's ministry is sponsoring an outing to the PNC Arena in Raleigh to hear Dr. David Jeremiah on October 11, 2018 at 7 p.m. The men's ministry has 25 free tickets on a first come, first serve basis. If you are interested, please sign the sign up sheet located in the administrative office. Thank you. I have a card. Calpurnia Anderson Croom from family, friends, and acquaintances. Troy, Dion, Craig, Claudia, and grandchildren would like to take this opportunity to sincerely express our heartfelt thanks for the many loving acts shown towards us in the recent loss of our wonderful dear mother. What a true blessing to have caring and wonderful people in our lives. We are so thankful. With love and sincere thanks, Troy, Dion, Craig, and family. Please let us remember our known sick and shut in Remember them with our cards, calls, and visits, but most of all, let us remember them in our prayers. These are the announcements for today. Thank you and have a blessed week.
We honor our God today as we allow waiting worshipers to enter. We honor and praise him for allowing us to be present another time as we come to worship him in spirit and in truth. We honor our worship leader this morning, the chairperson of our ushers ministry here at Oak City Baptist Church, Sister Shakita Douglas, Deaconess Shakita Douglas. We honor all of our clergy. Uh, Reverend Stone is sitting with us in the pulpit. Reverend Cassandra Stone is on the keyboard. Reverend Pope is in the choir. And our absent clergy we honor. We also honor Dr. Smalls up there. Dr. Smalls, who's here in the choir as well, and those who are absent. <clears throat> if they're visiting clergy, we honor you, and we thank God for your presence here today. Um, we greet all of you today in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is good to us. Give the Lord a hand, clap of praise if he's good. <laughs> praise the Lord. Good see, uh, it's good to see uh, Dr. Dorothy Burns back with us, who lives in Maryland now but she comes to visit her home church as often as she can. And for those of you who don't know, she's the mom of Deaconess Priscilla Batts. Praise the Lord. And uh, we thank God that she's back with us today. It's good to see uh, Sister Bennett and uh, her mom, I believe she stayed with you. And yeah, Dr. Forbes is my mentor as well as my buddy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's good to have you here with us today. And, uh, Hamilton, God bless you, Brother Hamilton, and uh, the person you have with you, uh, gentleman from Springfield Baptist Church, glad to have you with us, God bless you, Sister Kimball, it's always good to have you back with us, God bless you, and part of the Pope family, and there are others who are here who would like to not to stand, Sister, is it Watisha? Well, the one who's here uh, with her children, we're glad to have you with us. And if you don't have a church home, we recommend Oak City. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To others who elected not to stand, thank you for coming this way. Thank you so much. Today we are celebrating the work of our ushers here at Oak City Baptist Church and how they are such a blessing to not only Oak City, but everywhere we go to carry out ministry. They are there to support and serve. And there is no better group of ushers anywhere than what we have here at Oak City Baptist Church. Y'all agree with me? Praise the Lord. They are the best. And we thank God for uh, our leadership with our ushers ministry. Want to thank um, those of you who accompanied us to uh, Durham on Monday night. We went to be there to support one of our own who was being honored. Attorney Karen Bethia Shields um, was being honored for being the first black female attorney from Durham County and representing Durham City and Durham County. Uh, she has made history in several different instances. Um, and we thank God that we were there to witness that on Monday night. About 12 to 15 of us were there. I'm just guessing now, but uh, it could have been more than that. They were there, some of her colleagues who are judges now, uh, those who are upcoming judges, the dean of the law school was there from uh, North Carolina Central University, and many from Oak City were there to celebrate with Attorney Shields. Hold your hand up, Attorney Shields, so they might see who you are. That's the lady I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A graduate of the Duke Law School and uh, East Carolina University, and just doing wonderful things. Yesterday they celebrated the, um, uh, I think the 50th anniversary of the Burial Kelly High School. Uh, and uh, they received uh, other honors, but uh, Attorney Shields was able to make some comments there. And uh, I wish it had been known uh, by all of those who were in attendance that she has made her mark as a graduate of Burial Kelly High School. Many people have, but I doubt if any have reached the heights that she has reached. And uh, I was so proud that she was able to bring remarks there on behalf of Burial Kelly High School on yesterday. I was there with uh, one of my classmates. 
we attended school together at St. Augustine's, he was on a state championship basketball team from Barrow Kelly High School. And uh, we had a chance to chat a little bit. Most of you know Dr. Enoch Holloway. Uh, he was on that championship team that beat Elm City High School uh, back in the early 60s, early to mid 60s. And uh, we are uh, very proud to be a part of that on yesterday. I want to thank those of you who accompanied me on Wednesday night as we went to uh, minister to the people over at Wake Baptist Grove Baptist Church in Garner. They had a revival service. And I want to thank our celebration choir who also accompanied me along with our ushers. And um, we just had a delightful time. Uh, I saw some people uh, yesterday, uh, last night, Friday night at the banquet and they are singing the praises of Oak City Baptist Church and the choir, the ushers, and everything that went on Wednesday night over at Wake Baptist Grove. So thank you. Many of you were there because we canceled Bible study so that you could accompany us. Thank you for all of those of you who were able to come and be there with us. We had a fellowship banquet on Friday night, the unified fellowship banquet of the Wake Missionary Baptist Association. Um, it's in, in its 30th, 31st year of having that annual banquet. And we had a marvelous speaker, the first vice president of the General Baptist State Convention, a local pastor, Reverend Dr. J. Vincent Terry, former moderator of the Johnston Missionary District Association as well. Uh, he brought a delightful message. Several people were honored, what they called the Hall of Fame, uh, for the Wake Association, and the food was uh, uh, pretty good, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll move on. <laughs> it was held in North Raleigh Hilton, by the way, and 17 of us were there uh, representing Oak City. Uh, two of our youth were recognized at the banquet, uh, Brother Benny Kaminga, who's ushering, hold your hand up, Benny. He received first place in the Oratoka contest for the Wake Association. He was given a nice uh, emblem, uh, trophy, uh, as a, an award for his winning first place. And then Brother Mozingo Michael Dombey was there to receive second place in the junior division. Where are you, Michael? There he is on the side over there. Very proud of those two young men how they have represented Oak City Baptist Church this year in the Oratoka contest. We had quite a few people who were at the food shuttle on yesterday morning. Uh, we had so many people until we finished in an hour. And uh, I want to again applaud Sister Verdi Ray for her leadership and all of those of you who get up early on Saturday morning, 6, 6, 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30, whatever time it is, to get there by 7.30 and to serve pack bags, of food that's been donated by uh, grocery stores, farmers markets, and other places, and deliver those foods to people in need. And we were able to do that on Saturday morning. We do it once a month. And we want to thank the missionary ministry on the leadership of Sister Ray and all the volunteers who come to serve. Thank you. I mentioned uh, we had Method Day on yesterday uh, where Attorney Shields brought comments. Uh, one of the key components of Method Day on yesterday was where uh, plaques were awarded to the Barrio Kelly High School uh, as well as the community for being a historical site. Um, they had plaques that were uh, presented on yesterday and these plaques come from the state of North Carolina as well as the National Register of Historic Sites in Washington, D.C. So it's both a state historical site and a national historic site, right down the street, Burial Kelly High School. The gymnasium is still there, as well as a building called the Pioneer Building. And um, those two plaques were awarded on yesterday by officials from the state of North Carolina. Our city council representative was there, uh, Kate Crowder, to preside and also bring welcome remarks. It was quite a day. So for those of you who have roots in the Methodist community, 
you need to be very, very proud. Uh, this community was founded by people of color, slaves and former slaves, uh, who started this community called Slab Town. Uh, they built their own homes out of slabs that they cut themselves and made themselves from trees. From there it became Mason Village and at some point it was called uh, another name before it was called Method. Uh, some people think the name Method may have come from the railroad uh, company, the railroad that runs nearby. Uh, but uh, this is a very historic place and I'm so proud that Oak City is here in this community and we intend to stay here. Praise the Lord. As I wrap up, I want to congratulate uh, Brother Justin Smith. Justin, I don't think is here today, but his mom is here. Sister um, Vicki Smith. Uh, Justin has been accepted into college at Virginia University at Lynchburg. Uh, he was blessed to also get a $5,000 scholarship. Let's give them a hand. Justin Smith. Stand up, Sister Vicki, so they might see who you are. Your son is not here, but you stand up. That's the mom, the proud mom. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Also want to congratulate her absence. She might be looking at us through live streaming because she had to work today. Sister Glenda Sandlin. She is a, a grandmother for the second time. Praise the Lord. She has a proud granddaughter that was born just before the banquet started on Friday night. And she was at the banquet. <laughs> But another granddaughter, uh, well, another grandchild. She has a grandson who's seven years old, uh, born to her daughter, La Precious, and her son-in-law, uh, Brandon. And the grandson's name is Brandon, spelled with the E rather than an A. And the granddaughter that was born Friday evening is named Briley. Briley Adala Grace Barabino. She's got four names. Praise the Lord. And I know Sister Sandlin is very, very proud. In fact, all the nurses say the baby looks like Sister Sandlin. So she's beaming from ear to ear. And sent me a picture of the baby, too. Praise the Lord. The birthdays are listed in the bulletin for this week. Our son is uh, having a birthday today and celebrating with his family down in Florida on vacation. Um, the 27th, Shania uh, Pope Edwards will be celebrating her birthday. The 29th, Vasquez Perkins celebrating his birthday. The 30th, Roderick Banks, Sister Adlin Payton, and Sister Cassandra Watford. 31st, Jameson Birch, one of our uh, youngsters. And then on the 1st, Deacon William Brown. Happy birthday to all of you with a birthday this week. And anniversaries this week, uh, Dennis and April, they also in Florida celebrating uh, the anniversary and having vacation time. And also uh, Stephanie is there as well. Uh, the 30th, uh, Reverend Michael and Sister Lane Pope. Now they are, they are here, I know they are here. Will y'all please stand? Reverend Pope, how, which one is this? Number 36, <laughs> Number 36 praise the Lord. Give them a big hand. All right, congratulations, Reverend and Sister Pope. God bless you. The prayer list uh, is extensive. Let me just share a few names we've added. Uh, under the membership, continue to pray for Trustee James McFadden. Uh, under non-members, Brother Archie Austin, uh, Sister Gwen Durr, Brother Fred Harris, Reverend Shirley Kearney, Sister Janet Lindsay, the sister of Trustee Robinson, also her brother, Brother Billy McLamb, down in Florida. Both of them are having some health challenges. Sister Lindsay just had surgery, and Brother McLamb is having some uh, follow-up difficulties after having some surgery. So lift them up. Sister Janice Moore, the sister of Sister uh, Lula Fleming. Sister Carla Parker. Sister Mildred Taylor. Sister Margaret Williams. Sister Williams is a sister of our own Sister Marie McDade, who's having uh, 
severe challenges with an ongoing chronic illness. The people we've added include uh, the grandmother, Sister A uh, Angela Allen, Sister Mildred Stevenson, and also her uncle, Brother Dewey Stevenson. Please lift them up in prayer when you pray. Before I take my seat, uh, I do want to ask at this time Deacon Douglas if he will come to make a special presentation. Deacon Michael Douglas, Chair of our Deacon's Ministry. First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Reverend Newkirk, to the other ministers in the building. One of the things that uh, um, a lot of people don't know is the time it takes to be in leadership and the sacrifice that you have to make with your time, your talent, sometimes even your resources. Um, so I wanted the ushers to recognize our leader this year. And one of the things that I put together was a certificate of appreciation to Sister Chiquita Douglas. Now, I call her Chiquita because she's my wife. But she has been leading the ushers ministry for over 30 years. Now, she, did, she I asked her yesterday how many she remembered, and she said 25. But she forgot that we led as co before she became the uh, chair by herself. So I want to recognize Sister Chiquita Douglas for 30 years of leadership to the Oak City Baptist Church Ushers Ministry. <laughs> Thank you to you all. Thank you. This totally caught me by surprise. That's hard to do. <laughs> Let us continue with our worship, with our offertory. The word of the Lord says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So we will now be led in our offertory prayer by Trustee Margaret Green. May we all stand. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Father, who sits high but look low. Father, we thank you for allowing us to have this usher in infancy Sunday. Father God, in Sunday school we talked about love, being thankful, and counting our blessings. So as we come this morning to bring our offer, offering to the altar, we ask that you bless it and that it be used according to your will. And this we ask in your precious name. Amen.
We will now be led in our scripture reading for the morning. We will ask Deacon Douglas to please come forward. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 16. And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they that persecuted the prophet who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but, one on, but on a lampstand and give light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us all pray. Father God, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this day, the day that you have made. We ask, Lord, thank you. We thank you, Lord, for how you woke us this morning clothed in our right minds blessed with our health and our strength lord we thank you lord for the visible activity of our limbs lord jesus we thank you for those who desire to be here but for whatever reason we're not able to be but we just say thank you for this opportunity lord to stand before you and worship and praise your holy and righteous name lord we thank you thank you lord for these your ushers that we have come to serve you lord and to serve these your people lord we have decided rather to be doorkeepers in the house of the Lord rather than to be uh, within the tents of the wicked in wickedness, Lord Jesus. We just say thank you, Lord, for everything that has gone forth at this time, Lord Jesus. We ask that you continue to bless this service, Lord. We ask your spirit in this service, Lord. We welcome your Holy Spirit, and Lord, we uh, thank you, Lord, for the pastor as he brings forth the word, Lord, that we will hear it and not be hearers only, but be ye also doers of your written word. Lord, we just say thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you, and let all things be said and done for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. As we are taking our seats and getting comfortable, 
let us be mindful of the words that were read in our hearing during the scripture. We can all be assured that we will be hearing something Amen. about light. Amen. The table of the Lord has been set. So let us prepare to pick up our forks and feast on, on the words that are becoming from our pastor, Reverend Dr. William Newkirk. We can be assured we will receive a message that will challenge us that will want to put the mirror in our face and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying to me? So as we prepare to hear the message, let us first encourage our pastor by saying, God bless, God bless. Reverend Newkirk, Reverend Newkirk. Preach, with preach with power, and we are going to be listening. So let us go forth and hear this special selection from our choir and then we will hear the word for today, the word that is for us, the word that is each, for each one of us to grow us into the man and woman that God is calling us to be right here in 2018.
Praise the Lord. finished yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's becoming their signature song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Can't nobody do it like they can. That song. Praise the Lord. That and near the cross. Their signature songs. Praise the Lord. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Sister Anderson. Praise the Lord for your leadership. Thank you for your leadership. Thank our wonderful musicians, Amen. Reverend Cassandra Stone, Brother Tony McFarlane, and Brother Corey High. Give them a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. We welcome those of you who are joining us by way of live streaming and possibly by way of television. Amen. We thank God for your being a part of the services here today as we celebrate the work of our ushers ministry. We thank God for how he uses our doorkeepers to be a blessing to us and to others. So when you pray, please mention Oak City Baptist Church and we'll certainly pray for you. Our background scripture has come from the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes and then some additional verses from that fifth chapter of Matthew, verses 13 through, verses one through 16, I'd like to lift up again uh, one of those verses to serve as our text for today's message. Matthew chapter five, and it's good to see BJ back, praise the Lord. BJ has been on a tour, Las Vegas and Oklahoma City, different places. In fact, I saw a picture of him with the star of Oklahoma City's basketball team, pro basketball team. Uh, BJ, it's good to have him back. Hold your hand up. Good to have him back. Praise the Lord. He'll be uh, playing ball this fall at Cary High School and uh, during the summer he goes with AAU to sharpen his skills and they did a marvelous job this summer on that tour. 
Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. The New King James reads like this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. As we celebrate the work of our official doorkeepers today, the ushers ministry, I want us to see them in a different light, a different light, if you will. So let's talk about the light of the church, the light of the church. I read an interesting piece some time ago entitled, how many religious people does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> For charismatics, only one. Their hands are already in the air. For Roman Catholics, none. They only use candles. For Jews, they first want to find Jacob's ladder before they change a light bulb. For the Amish, they want to know, what is a light bulb? For Mormons, it takes five of them, one man to change it, and four wives to tell him how to do it. <laughs> For Methodists, it's an undetermined number. Everybody just bring a light bulb to the Sunday lighting service, and they'll switch them all out. For Baptists, it takes at least 16. <laughs> One to change the light bulb. And three committees of five people. <laughs> One committee to approve the change. A second committee to decide the type of bulb. And a third committee to decide who brings the potato salad and the chicken. <laughs> The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapters 5 through 7, is called the Sermon on the Mount. It is Jesus' longest sermon and perhaps his greatest teaching lesson that probably occurred over several days while on a hillside near the town of Capernaum. Jesus began his sermon by describing the character traits he was looking for in people who wanted to follow him, people who would follow him, and people who would serve him and others. He went on to say that believers who met those character traits would be truly blessed. Enormous crowds followed Jesus everywhere he went. He was the talk of the town. And everybody wanted to see this itinerant preacher and this miracle worker who came from Nazareth. They wanted to see him for themselves. As the crowd was gathering on this unique occasion, Jesus pulled his disciples aside and warned them not to expect fame or fortune if they were going to be his disciples. No, they would not become local heroes or local sheroes. They would not be a part of the Fortune 500 tycoons. Instead, they should be prepared to suffer. They would be prepared for isolation. They should be prepared for ridicule. They should be prepared for persecution. Then Jesus gave a couple of illustrations to help drive home his point for his disciples. He told them that he's also telling us today. He told them that we are to be like salt that penetrates and like light that radiates. Ushers, if Oak City, the ushers here at Oak City, I say to you today, as you celebrate another year of service in the Lord's work, I believe what Jesus said to his disciples is extremely relevant 
to what you do Sunday after Sunday and any other time that there's a service that's going on where you're asked to serve. In many ways, ushers, you are the light of the church. In examining the Lord's disciples, you probably never would see more down-to-earth group of people than his disciples. You never would see a more common group of guys than what he had as disciples. They were ordinary men. No one stood out as being an important person in the community. No disciple had any outstanding features. No one had a leadership position or had accomplished a great feat. They were just ordinary men. So when Jesus said they were to be the light of the world, it probably turned more than a few heads. You see, my brothers and my sisters, for hundreds of years, the Greeks were known worldwide to be the leaders when it came to superior knowledge, when it came to architecture, when it came to art, when it came to philosophy, when it came to everything else. The Greeks were head and shoulders above all others. It was Greece who produced the likes of Aristotle, the likes of Plato and Socrates. Long before Jesus made the statement that his disciples were the light of the world. What was Jesus talking about when he said that? When he said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. He went on to say, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. He went on to say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Well, what is light? Some would say light is miraculous. Others would say light is a mystery. Webster's Dictionary went on to, great, to use great lengths to explain what light really is. In fact, Webster uses a half page describing what light looks like and what light does. It uses scientific terms to explain light waves and radiation. It even says light comes from fire but almost hidden down among all the scholarly jargon that Webster uses, Webster says light is that which makes it possible to see. He breaks it down and makes it simple for us to understand. Light is that which makes it possible to see. One of the words used to describe God is the word light. The Bible says that God is light. Intellectually, that means any knowledge of God can also be light. Morally, that means the goodness and holiness of God is light. Physically and spiritually, that means the love of God is light. Ushers, when our Lord Jesus says that we are the light of the world, he is saying that something special has been deposited inside each of us that points others to him. And we are to let our light shine each Sunday and at other times. I want you to know that when you serve as doorkeepers in the house of the Lord, you are indeed the light of the church. Like moths, mosquitoes, and other insects who are drawn to light at night, your serving as doorkeepers for the Lord will tend to draw people to God's house and to the truth of God's holy word. 
Let me see if I can break it down for us to fully understand how ushers are the light of the church. I think I'll do it by answering five questions. I want to answer the questions who, what, when, where, and why. Why don't we start with who? Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. The verse begins with these words. You are the light of the world. Listen, Jesus was not talking to just anybody. No, he didn't call any names. But we know when Jesus used the word you, he was not talking about everybody. Well, who was he talking about? Look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, where it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up to a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them. Notice that Jesus did not begin to teach until his disciples arrived. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because Jesus knew that some of the multitude that followed him did so for a variety of reasons. Some followed out of curiosity. Some were hoping to see a miracle. A few probably needed healing. Some wanted to eat. Some were just being nosy. Some just wanted to be in the crowd. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about the multitudes believing in Jesus or believing in his message. No, they were too busy receiving. They brought their sick people to Jesus. They brought those who were demon-possessed. They brought lunatics, those who had the palsy. You name it, they were there to receive healing or deliverance. But also in the crowd were believers. Also in the crowd were those who were actually servants. Servants who were true disciples. Servants who were true followers of Christ. Those who sat at the feet of Jesus and absorbed every word that proceeded out of his mouth. Ushers, you are among those who are called the who. You and every born-again believer, you and every servant of Jesus Christ, Jesus is saying that you are the light of the world and I contend that you are the light of the church. Yes. Get some feedback. Now that we've dealt with that, the word who, let's take a look at the what. The what. What is Jesus talking about? The what is the light. In verse 14, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Jesus said in this cold, dark, and dismal world, if there's, any, if there's only one light the world can see, let that light radiate from you. Don't worry about the multitudes. Don't even worry about your surroundings. Don't worry about the person next to you. You just let your light shine right where you stand. Let your light shine right where you serve. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said at the church, to the church at Philippi. It's there in Philippians, the second chapter, verses 14 and 15. Listen to what he said. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. 
Wouldn't it be great if not a single church member ever complained? Wouldn't it be great if nobody ever got mad or been out of shape because they couldn't have their way? The Apostle Paul said, we need to be children of God who are blameless and harmless, without fault in a world that's crooked and going in the wrong direction. Paul said we need to be the light in this dark world. Ushers and Christian friends, you are the light of the world. You are the light of this church. You are the light of your community. You are the light at your workplace. You are the light for your children. So let your light shine wherever you are and wherever you go. Next, let us examine the word when. Look at the second part of verse 14 in Matthew chapter 5. It says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. What is that saying to us? It is saying that we are required and called to let our light shine all the time. When? All the time. When we feel like it and we don't feel like it. When? We must put off, put off our selfish agenda. Put it aside. We must put on our personal ambitions all on the back burner as well. We must allow our light to shine for God all the time, wherever we are. There's a story about a lighthouse employee who worked in a tall lighthouse on the coastline in the early days of kerosene and number two oil. Each month, the lighthouse keeper would receive a fresh supply of oil and that supply was the last him all month, the entire month. The keeper's job was to keep the lighthouse light burning. But being located near a local village and there were local families who lived in the village, the lighthouse would often have visitors coming. One month, a widow woman came from the village and beg for some oil from the lighthouse keeper to keep her family warm. Someone else begged for oil to use in their lamp, and another person wanted oil to lubricate a wheel. Being sympathetic, the lighthouse keeper granted all of their requests. Near the end of the month, however, <clears throat> the supply of oil ran out at the lighthouse and the beacon light on the top went out. That very night, two ships were wrecked. Several lives were lost. When the authorities investigated the, ex the incident, the man in the lighthouse was so distraught and so sorry. But the lighthouse keeper told him, told him what happened to the, he asked him, what happened to the oil? And after he told the story to the authorities, the authorities said to the lighthouse keeper, that oil was given to you for one purpose, to keep the lighthouse light burning. Ushers and Christian friends, you are never to waste your light. Your light should always shine brightly for all to see. And ushers, you are the light of this church. Now I want to address the word where. Where should your light shine? Look at verse 15 in Matthew, the fifth chapter, where it says, Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Where should our light shine? Everywhere. How many times have we thought to ourselves or heard someone say, 
I'm going to witness to someone about Jesus Christ, but I'm waiting on the right time. I'm waiting on the right place. And I'm waiting on the right situation. Well, the right time, the right place, and the right situation may never come. It may never come again. The Bible says tomorrow is not promised to any of us. We cannot afford to wait on the right moment. We cannot afford to wait on the, on the right place. We cannot afford to wait on the right situation. We need to let our light shine everywhere and at all times at every opportunity. A young man was about to leave his church and his hometown after receiving a new job in a new city. And he was with a new company that he was not familiar with. The young man's pastor warned him as he was about to leave. On that last Sunday he was at church, the pastor warned him that the company who hired him was quite a worldly company and would challenge his faithfulness to Almighty God. The pastor went on to say that the company had a reputation for mistreating born-again believers. Let me ask you something, church. Do you know of any companies that tell their employees that the company must come first? You know any companies like that? I used to work for one like that. Well, months after this young man left, and after he started working, the church and the pastor heard that the young man's experience with the new company had been nothing but pleasant. I mean, everything was just going so well. When the young man returned to his hometown to visit, he went to church and the pastor asked him, you mean they haven't persecuted you at all for being a Christian? The young man said, no, pastor. As a matter of fact, they haven't even found out yet that I'm a Christian. <laughs> Ushers and church family, do people outside of Oak City know that you are a Christian? Is your light shining outside of these walls of Oak City Baptist Church? I want you to know that you are the light of this church. Okay. We've looked at who, we've looked at what, we've looked at when and where. Finally, let's look at why. Let's look at why. Amen. Why is found in Matthew, the fifth chapter, in verse 16, where it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Why should you let your light shine? You let it shine to glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Why? Because you are the light of this church. Why? Because you are like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Why? Because you're like a lamp on a lampstand. Why? Because you are the light of the world and ushers, you are also the light of this church. Even though God can make the rocks cry out in giving him praise, that is not the way God designed it. God created human beings to praise him and to praise his holy name. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth and you are also the light of the world. So let your light shine, ushers. I can remember the first few songs I ever memorized as a child. In elementary school, it was Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Anybody else remember that? Another one was Mary had a little lamb. And what's the rest of it? His sheep was white as snow. Everywhere the lamb was. Y'all were there too, weren't you? <laughs> Another was Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, and Humpty Dumpty. All the king's men could not put Humpty. All right. 
I think the first songs that I memorized at church was Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. And that's why we still sing it today, our children and our young people. And then there was another song that uh, I was taught uh, in Sunday school. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. One song taught me the power of God's love. Jesus loves me, this I know. The other song taught me my love for God and what I can do for God. And that is this little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. And then the last verse, the last verse says it all. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ushers, people are watching you all the time because you do usher. You stand at our doors and you serve people. You show people where to go. You direct people. But you know the best thing that you do of all is to let your light shine. So I say to you today as we celebrate your work, as we celebrate your serve, I want to let you know don't stop letting your light shine. Let your light shine. Let it shine. Everywhere you go, everywhere you are, let your light shine because you are the light of the world. Amen, amen, and amen. There may be someone today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to let him put the light in your life that no one else can put there. You can't do it, and nobody else can do it. Only the love of Jesus and acceptance of Jesus, allowing his spirit to live in you. We call it the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead. But only his spirit in your life and the faith you have in him can allow your light to shine. So if there's anyone here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to come. If there's someone here who has not become a part of a church, your name is not listed as a disciple of Christ at this branch of Zion, and you're not listed on someone's church role, why not take care of that today? Why not make things right today? You need to be a part of a fellowship, a believing fellowship that's worshiping, praying, and studying God's word. If you're not a part of a church family and this feels like a good fit for you, why not come to Oak City? Come today. Let's get you on the road to serving God and letting him use you and letting your light shine. Stand with it, please. The choir is going to give us an invitation selection. And while they're singing, if there's one, come.
He didn't praise the Lord. We have standing before us, Brother Darrell Fort. He is no stranger to Oak City. It's been a while since he's been here, though. His father was Brother Ransom Fort. His mom, Sister Eula Fort. Both members of this church. Brother Fort has gone on to be with the Lord, his father. He's got several brothers who have joined this church, but they've been sort of inactive. Brother uh, Darrell has been sending his tithes every month to Oak City. And finally, praise the Lord, he's been in the Navy, retired, he didn't retire, but he spent his time in the Navy out in San Diego, and uh, he's back at home now in Raleigh, in Ghana really, well, it's, it's a Raleigh community address, but it's near Ghana, on Old Stage Road. He is coming to, he wants to be rebaptized. He's been baptized once before, but he wants to do it again. Praise the Lord. And we will accommodate. I'll have some help, but we'll get it done. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, but Brother Ford is coming to really recommit, to recommit, so he's not being accepted as a new member. He's coming to be, to recommit his life to the Lord and to reconnect with Oak City Baptist Church. So let's say he's being restored. He's being restored into the fellowship of Oak City Baptist Church. We're gonna make this official. So be any questions about it? Hold on one second. Motion by our deacons that he be restored, Brother Darrell Fort. It's been moved and properly seconded that Brother Fort be restored and a full-fledged member. You've heard the motion. Ready for question? All in favor say aye. Opposed no? Ayes have it. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. out in just a moment with closing remarks but before I do I want to say a prayer those who would like special prayer just stand stand right where you are if you want special prayer just stand we're not going to ask you to come to the altar but I want to thank God for our brother Fort yeah. uh, he's had some trials and tribulations he had to deal with and he's come through in flying colors because he's been trusting the Lord and now he wants to give God his best yeah. and that's why he's come back so let's pray Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy and how you have blessed us today by helping us to know that we are the light of the world. And God, we thank you for our ushers because they are the light of this church along with other born-again believers. We thank you for Brother Fort, oh God, who has recommitted his life to you. He has come forth not only to just be restored, but to also be baptized again. So we thank you for his faith. We thank you for his commitment. We thank you, oh God, that he's determined to serve you. Bless his mother and the rest of his family. And oh God, remember those on our prayer list. You know the names that we have listed there. We pray that you might raise them up from their sick beds. And those names that are not even on the list, you know those who are in need of help, in need of healing, in need of strength, they need to be raised up from their sick beds. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy upon each and every one. And now, Lord, we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory for what you're doing in the life of Brother Fort and in all of our lives. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Fort, if you will, see uh, Sister Stevenson before you leave. She'll need to get your name address birthday, things like that, so we can make sure we have an official record. Okay. God bless you. May turn to your seat. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. thank God for another day of life, for another year of service. The Lord is doing something interesting with the ushers here at Oak City Baptist Church, and we are just positioned to receive whatever he has in store for us. As I think in terms of the message this morning, I reflect back on a training session that we had a couple of months ago, and we were reminded that we are the PR for the church. You know, when someone comes to the church, they normally see one of two groups. They see the parking lot attendants, and they see the ushers. 
so the light that we illuminate can have an impact on what happens when someone enters into the sanctuary. So let us be mindful, let us be challenged by the word that was given this morning, that we are a light of the church and that we need to allow the love of Christ to continue to shine through us. We give God again all praise, glory, and honor for this another year, for this another year that Reverend Newkirk has listened to my request to please critique us. Let us know how we're doing. If there's something that we need to do a little differently, let us know that. I want to thank the ushers that counted it not robbery to invest their time and energy and probably laundry last week as you served with us uh, a couple of times. Normally when there is a service beyond the normal Sunday that the ushers serve, they're responsible for serving all week. And last week, some of us were together three times. And I thank you, I didn't hear any grunting, any complaining, everyone was there, in some cases before I was there, ready to serve the Lord, and I say thank you for that. Also, as I stand here and I think about, and I think about what was said concerning the number of years that I've been serving, I count it all to Deacon Lofton because he looked at me one Sunday and said, hmm, you look like an usher. <laughs> and I thought, what does an usher look like? <laughs> but I thank Sister Lucy Jones for setting the example because she was ushering when I joined the group, when I joined the ministry, and I thank her for her level of service and for standing in the shadows but she's always there to fill in the gap. Whenever there's something I can't do, whenever I'm traveling and I can't get back to my duty station, I can always send a message through Lucy Mae Jones. You know, sit down at my computer and just send a quick message and I can count it done. I thank God for this team of ushers working with me here at Oak City, uh, but we know that God is not through with us yet and we are just waiting for the next assignment. So thank you all for your level of service and thank you for allowing us to worship the Lord this morning. Before I uh, make my remarks concerning the ushers ministry, I do want to thank the male chorus for going with me last Sunday evening. Uh, I forgot to mention that in my pastoral comments. Uh, last Sunday evening, uh, the ushers as well as the male chorus accompanied me to um, go, uh, Wake Forest at um, Olive Branch Baptist Church. So thank you, uh, male chorus. Thank you, ushers and members who were there on last Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock for the pastor's anniversary uh, service. Again, um, you blessed the pastor by being there with me. Now, help me to thank Sister Chiquita Douglas for her great work, her great leadership. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Deaconess Douglas, uh, Sister Douglas, for your great work and your leadership. Uh, 30 years, that's a long time uh, to be in leadership and to also do it in a superb manner. She serves in an excellent way. Uh, we get along fine. She communicates with me. I communicate with her. Uh, I admire the way she handles things. We have a lot of th things in common uh, in the way we like to do things and to make sure we do it right. And I, I appreciate her uh, striving for excellence. I just believe if you're going to serve the Lord, I believe you've got to give the Lord your best. Amen. I don't believe in giving the Lord second best. If you can do better, let's do it. If you can't, the Lord is pleased, but do the best you can. And I like her excellence about the ushers' ministry. She's always bringing training to them, always uh, looking for ways to improve, and I appreciate her leadership. So again, thank God for all the ushers today, and I want to ask all the ushers please stand. All ushers please stand. All right, give them a hand, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your service your unselfish service. 
And again, thank you all for being here today. When you say it all you know, let us stand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Choir, y'all got to close the chorus. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the fellowship and communion of God's Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forever. Let us all sing together.